a boy really is uniquely suited to squash the excuses we all give for not taking action. Jacques Lusserin, a little known hero of the French resistance movement, at the age of eight, Lusserin lost his eyesight when he fell into the corner of his teacher's desk at school. Uh, and one of the arms of his eyeglasses tore him to his right eye. His left eye then suffered from symptomatic inflammation, and both eyes were left completely blind during World War II. In a time when blind kids were often sent to special schools, Jacques never wanted to get treated differently. He went back to his school, made many friends, rose to the top of the class, and joined with the other boys in their rough and tumble play. When Charles de Gaulle, leader of the Free French, called upon his countrymen to continue to morally and physically resist the German occupation, Jacques knew beyond a shadow of doubt that he wanted to fight for the things in our heads and our hearts we call freedom. Both in blind eyes, Lusserin knew he couldn't become a soldier or take up arms and wasn't sure exactly when and how he could contribute to the resistance movement. But he felt sure he'd find a way to do something, and he told a friend, I'm going to make war. I don't know how, but I shall make it. Theodore Roosevelt, to do what you can with what you have where you are. Jacques practiced German two hours every day way back in 1938 simply because he could tell that Europe was rocking towards the east. He wanted to prepare himself with what was to come. The others had a hundred questions about how exactly their movement was going to be organized and operated. And Jacques found just as he'd hoped that he was able to come up with the answers and ideas on the spot. Jacques then reached out to ten others, giving them just a few details of what he was thinking of doing. They are all encouraging him to move on the idea. So he took another step, called a meeting. He had expected that just the twelve friends he had contacted would come. Instead, 52 of his classmates showed up. By simply opening his mouth, the 16-year-old had set the wheels in motion. There was no turning back, even if he still ha didn't know exactly how to proceed and what laid ahead. Being an underground movement, there could be no questions of getting expert advice, not from politicians, officers, newspapers, men, or even their, from their parents. The young men would have to figure it out all on their own. If they would have asked an expert, no doubt they would have been talked out of it, or the Gestapo would have arrested them. When Jacques lost his sight as a boy, he found that his other senses became keenly sharpened. His sense of smell became animal-like to the point where he could detect people's confidence or stress simply by sense. Jacques could use the sounds of creaking floorboards to gauge the dimensions of a room. He could tell where there was a crack in a window and whether a door had been pushed open by a human hand or wind. Lusserin further learned to read people's voices like books. He found that if he let the voices truly vibrate in his heart and chest, they would reveal the character of the person. Because of his gift, Jacques' friends voted to put him in charge of recruiting for the Volunteers of Liberty. Each new member would have to be checked out before being admitted. Potential recruits were taken to a room with Jacques alone. He would interview them 
and they'd try to say the right things, but Jacques wasn't listening to their words. He was listening to their voices. He could hear in their voices if they were telling the truth, he could hear if they had moral character and if they could be trusted. Jacques' judgment turned out to be nearly unerring. Of the 600 recruits he let into the Volunteers of Liberty, 599 turned out to be loyal to the cause, which with one, Lusserin felt something was not right with him. He didn't want to trust him, but changed his mind by the men's other qualifications and the encouragement of his friends. He should have trusted his gut. He turned out to be the informers who eventually got Lusserin and his comrades arrested to the Nazis. When Jacques started the Volunteers of Liberty, he was just 16 years old, and the oldest member of the group was 20. The idea that young people were not capable of doing anything significant actually worked in the group's favor. The boys' neighbors saw them as just a bunch of kids and do not suspect anything. Young as we were, we could easily go all over, pretending to be playing games or making foolish talk, wandering around whistling with our hands in our pockets outside of factories or German convoys, hang out about kitchens and on sidewalks, climbing over walls, everything would be on our side. The Volunteers of Liberty were going to be building a information network not an organization of professional agents but some things better an organization of agents dedicated and nearly invisible because they looked like harmless youngsters the French Sawyer which grew to a circulation of 450,000 would become the most important paper in Paris after the war and for Jacques's part, his experience in gathering appraises and distributing the news would certainly make a difference to any set of people. His fellow prisoners at the Buchenwald concentration camp, where he ended up after being arrested in 1943. He was released from the concentration camp one year later. While he was imprisoned, he was able to start a new resistance group. Because he was blind, he did not have to go to the labor camps. He started another secret newspaper. He could go undetected because he could hear when the guards were near. Because he knew German, he could understand when the guards discussed their plans. After the war, he moved to the USA. He married and had three children. He became a university professor teaching French literature. He wrote a book called And There Was Light. I recommend it to you if you want to read it. It, it will inspire you to notice miracles happening all around you, all the time. Jacques Lusserin is a hero. He showed me that even a teenager can be a hero, and to do what you can with what you have and where you are.